And boom! My next guest has been a long time coming. I think it's been like six months since we've gotten together. Um, oh, and that's I not did. even the one I want. Now you're on green screen. You're not there. You're on the moon. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> we are on the Project moon. Project A. Project Blue Beam, me, dude. <laughs> oh, see, I oh, can't even go to that one. Blue Beam. <laughs> When I yell blue beam, that means you get that picture up. Yeah, that's right. You're vacationing on the moon right now, Kurt. It's good to see you. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's talk, bro, because it's it's we're kind of in a wild spot. We're in the criminal cases of uh, Donnie T. We're maybe on the verge of war, World War III. Um, we've got... Spe- I say, though, okay, the, the eagle head has... The beak has turned to the right. You know how the, there's some kind of like contest of like you, you pussies fight it out. We'll, we'll decide, you know, and like, well, I guess you had your chance, uh, whatever gross thing. Uh, looks like we're going back with the old school APAC, George H.W. Well, not H.W. He got run out of office, I guess, for putting a stop to settlements, right? Kind of. I mean, the way I look at H.W., he was never a popular president. He was probably a little burnt out as kind of he... He orchestrated all the big things in the Reagan administration, right? I mean, he's had his hands all over um, what would be known as uh, Iran-Contra. Never really had to do anything with that. But remember, part of Iran-Contra was running the cocaine through Mena, Arkansas. You know, so uh, and the people don't yeah, realize. Yeah, and Clinton w- was replacement because he towed the line on, uh, you know, Clinton. The, the Clintons are, like, ambitious. They're like, where, how, how may we serve, Lord? I don't mean to Israel is that. I mean, like, whatever lizard creature is in charge of the world. That's what I, <laughs> I, but, I agree. I, I but, think uh, they're social climbers, and I think that he was a, a slick political candidate that they kind of groomed, came out of nowhere. I mean, he was nowhere on a national level before that. And, like and, Obama. Like Obama came out of fucking nowhere. His mom's a CIA whore. <laughs> that's what his mom was. It was CIA whore. That's what they do. They send him out like whores to marry some foreign guy. Barry Soweto, right? Sotero. Barry Sotero. Sotero. But Sotero, he took that from uh, actually the guy that hooked up with his mother after uh, the supposed Barack uh, star's father. But that's not even Frank Marshall Davis. So I don't like, think that's his father. That guy says his father. Yeah. I think it's Frank um, Marshall Davis. I mean, Yeah. I, yeah. Some, some revolutionary black guy, right? He and looks then, just like him. Know. Sounds just like him. Uh, Barack yeah, Obama is... They bred, they bred that right out of him. <laughs> they... They CIA whore bred the black revolutionary out of out of Obama <laughs> with his CIA whore mother and made him a bit of a... And the thing is so funny is, dude, that uh, and w- Mike McRae, who does a, a good impression of Obama on Jimmy's show, when the news broke from that guy who is not an operative of any kind, he was just writing about Obama and he happened to find the pages of this book of Obama telling some girl how he, in his mind, he has sex with men, but he like... Uh, no, he didn't say astral projects, but it's some goofy shit. Like, like he's saying some really good. I try to imagine, you know, because the the highest level of knowledge. I don't know if you know this uh, in the Hermetic orders, in the, in the like your Rosicrucians and your All Seeing Eye. The highest secret knowledge is that a hole's a hole. That's what they teach you at the highest <laughs> initiate level. A hole's a hole. So don't make a big deal about it. Whatever hole. Is a whole, is it is it frozen or are you being hit with this knowledge? Oh no, I'm I I, I I'm I'm absorbing. <laughs> yeah, and, and so you can learn that lesson at the top, the very top of society, or the bottom. You can learn in prison. Let me tell you a secret of the universe that that life life prisoners have known from centuries. Uh, trans women are women. <laughs> <laughs> so at Bohemian Grove, I was watching you talk about uh, their goofy almanacs of them. Doing a powder puff game or whatever the fuck they do. Mm-hmm. Wait, what's happening? Yeah, I, I'm being an idiot. Is what's happening. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I was watching you talking. You have their their almanacs of like what fruity thing they're gonna, what Giuliani SNL appearance they're gonna make of uh, <laughs> right? I do. Yeah, no, I have the. And I don't a, have the latest one. Booing women. The guy says he's a jazz man. He used to hang out with women. Boom! <laughs> they all, they're all booing. <laughs> and uh, it, that's the dude. It's all like. And also, by the way, most of them probably hate gays. <laughs> they all are like once a year just fucking the ass. <laughs> I always anyway. wonder, right? I, I think it. I, I, this to me is how it goes, right? Uh, I think dirty people, Jason. Let me tell you, my mother told me when I went to art school. She goes, "You got to watch your stuff in your art supplies. Artists are dirty people. They steal." And my mother was right. 
I'll tell you, I, similar, I, I was, yeah, well, I mean, I, that's kind of the field I was in, but I wasn't as artsy as you. I, I got into this school. I was too poor to go. I would have loved to Wait, go. Art Institute? Yeah, Art Institute of Philadelphia is where I, I had thought that I was, was going. That was a cheap-ass school, too. What? That was a cheap-ass school. You must be trash. Yeah, no, total trash, bro. <laughs> like, uh, the only time I've ever taken money from the government is for yeah. college with, like, the, what was it, the Pell Grants or whatever. Yeah, I and got like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, they made me go to a state school. Basically, the day before we were supposed to go sign up, they were like, no, we don't have the money for it. You can go apply to Oneonta. And uh, this was in May. Well, the, Oneonta, I thought, was a kind of comparable thing, wasn't they, it? They kind of tried to make it that. I knew people from that. No, was it? Well, I'll, I'll say this. The guy that was running it, uh, you know, they he was like, uh, he wasn't on the payroll of Macintosh, but like, like everything was decked out in a Mac and he had a free Mac and they used to give him even watches before it was a smart watch. And in that angle, I felt betrayed because I'm sitting there and I'm a student, I'm poor as shit. And, you know, they're trying to sell me on a Mac that's three times as expensive as a Pentium 2 at the time that does the same Ooh. exact thing, right? If not better. And then you could pirate the software much easier. Ooh, I said it. I pirated software as a college student. Oh, wait a minute. So, okay. when I See, it's funny. Whatever school I went to, I went for the computer animation program. Yeah. And by the time I left, they were teaching us on, uh, what the fuck was it called? It was before Flash. Yeah, yeah. So oh, when yeah. Flash came out, whatever the hell that I forgot that 3D I Studio right Max school. was like a big one, but we didn't even get to learn that. They were trying to teach us on Bryce, which was a joke. Uh, Maya was another big Maya. one at the time. Yeah, that's right. And um, what was the other one we had? Uh, uh, I don't know, but all of it was useless when Flash came out. <laughs> so my friends that graduated, they were working at like Heavy.com and um, places I got work writing when Machinima was a big thing. Mm -hmm. I would get. I would get like like a little two thousand dollar jobs to like write these scripts, you know, and they'd be sponsored by the military. SOCOM, this video game for PlayStation, which I did play. I remember SOCOM. I own it. Like a, yeah, and SOCOM. <laughs> so I made like a fake script of like a Full Metal Jacket parody with the SOCOM, you know, people, mm -hmm. and um, I think they didn't approve it. I didn't know how anything worked back then, so you know the, the way things have to get approved through the your Asian Chinese CCP. General, <laughs> I don't think up. we were quite there, but since Sony is uh, a Korean company, there is, a, there, I'm sure there was a little bit of that. No, I'm saying America has that. They, okay. Whatever you think they do in Asia, where some fucking government guy with commie colors comes in, America does that with the equivalent uniform and to make sure the propaganda is, mwah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, you're Roy not wrong. Crockett, yeah, I mean, and um, yeah, and so it was all useless by the time I got whatever I knew was useless. It, it Flash it dominated, and you just learned it at work. Luckily, it wasn't that much of a loan to Art Institute. I mean, it's like 10, 15 grand, so it's not a lot of money. Would have been a lot for me. Would have been a lot for me. But, anyway. Yeah. Well, no, no, it was for, it was for me at the time, but yeah. not... I mean, now I'm like, that's like... A, you could, in your lifetime, pay off a $15,000 debt. <laughs> that's the thing that could be done. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and, and was done, like, like most people. But again... It, Price, dude. I was just back in New York last week. It's a, it's a shithole. My college town is dead. It's worse than ever, dude. It's unbelievable. It's worse than ever. I, I had homeless people that had never been there before. All throughout Main Street, we had people now smoking crack in the medians because of the catch and release. They didn't want to deal with that. Uh, over fifteen hundred students down in the area. That's huge for you know a school that does about five thousand, and then the private university does about fifteen hundred. I mean everything. Dude, the price is in New York. I know you're out what, in California. What part of New York? I was in upstate New York. I was in uh, Oneana. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's always been what's called, a, I guess, a sacrifice zone. <laughs> Whether they knew it or not, they were always a Camden to the people that run shit. So, I mean, yeah. Now you know, it's, what's going to happen bad. with the city? The city naturally filters out the people that can't survive in that barren Harkonnen, giddy prime environment. So they're going to go to where you're from and yeah. they're going to lay on the streets up there. <laughs> <laughs> or just get bussed up there. Like, that's also part of it. Like, they got a whole oh, bus system. Yeah, that's a better point. <laughs> also, the the forced busing, much like uh, in UK, where they're like, hey, all these illegals that we just brought in are going to your small, it's like some little pepper pot English lady. And all of a sudden, there's all these, like, you know, Syrians with kind of a rightful grudge. <laughs> <laughs> I you know, that's a whole nother issue. But like they also, it was the first place in New York State where they put the Suboxone in, in the uh, vending yeah. machines. So the first month, it got pulled 120 times. 120 times in the first month. Wait, what got pulled? 
the, so it's a free vending machine at what used to be the Lord's table where my fraternity would uh, do like, so like once every couple months we'd go to the Lord's table and we'd serve the, the homeless community or, you know, people that were poor a free meal. Now they have an open door with a vending machine that's no money for Suboxone. So people are just, right. you know, hitting it, you know, in case of overdoses, but really just to take it as a drug too. You know, it's not just being used. Yeah, if you're not, if, you know, because I'm like, I, I feel like the you're, where they're going really, really wrong with that is uh, the vending machine. What <laughs> 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 that you just hit. Like a fucking dog getting a treat out of a thing. I feel like that's where they made their mistake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. Like, again, I was just like, oh, my yeah. God. But then on the flip side of that, one of my fraternity brothers that I'm talking to, he just did three years as a cop in the Bronx in New York City. And obviously, that's a trying gig. Uh, that's not necessarily yeah. like being a cop anywhere else in the world. I mean, when you're in the cesspits of those cities, it's pretty dark. Uh, but <clears throat> he quit his job. And he's now becoming a, a sheriff's deputy up in upstate New York at Otsego County. And uh, as bad as it is there... You know, he's not going to have to deal with gang shootings, you know, every other day and things like that. So, yeah, it, uh, my buddy, uh, I have a, a friend I used to work. He used to be my boss when I worked at the Wiz when I was like 19 and he became a cop in Camden, which is a he's a nice guy. Like he he was like the people at Camden. I actually liked them a lot. Like, like he made, he told me that some rich ass family that runs Jersey, the whole. Okay. I can't remember. Their, I can't remember their name. He told me. He goes because his family, they, like they just get to make the decisions of what is what. I'd never heard of him before. Okay. I got to text him and ask again. But uh, he get, he explained to me how the the all this shit works, and and, it, and I kind of knew because growing up in uh, near Seaside, you know, like my parents were in garbage. That's what the mob got run out of that when I was in high school. They had the the trials for those Sopranos family in uh, uh, Tom's River. And um, it like if you want to build, and then friends of mine later got jobs like being like city planners and shit. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, it's this really old boy corrupt shithole for a long time. Where like just to get a liquor, like you know all the bullshit you got to go through to start a business and whatever. And it's all like I don't know. People don't think about it. If you've ever been in a co-op building, <laughs> the the tyranny of co-ops, it's like that. But the for it's the a whole complete town. bureaucracy. They, they come it, in, yeah. they say the code work. Okay, you're allowed to have this many people there, but you got to change the mm. vents. Oh, you want a liquor license? Well, you can't get that or a beer license unless you're serving food. So now we got to have a kitchen, and then the kitchen completely has to be up to code. I mean, they just keep lopping it on all the Cor time. Completely corrupt. And that is standard. It's not even, I mean, I don't even really make a big thing of it because it's not. That's the normal way most shit works. And I guess people are like, just like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything. <laughs> I don't think they, and, and uh, anybody who ever ran a business will tell you how the fucking shit. You know, I have a buddy that ran uh, Hogs and Heifers in uh, New York and got run out of business and um, still think, like, thinks the Trump trial is like a real thing and Trump's a problem. Bro. I, again, I was in New York, so I'm in, I I, go, I went and visited my my best friend from high school. Now she's she was like the valedictorian in a, again a school that we only had like I don't know. I graduated with fifty four kids, but she's smart. You know, she was in all like the the uh, advanced classes, AP this and that. Got I mean, she went to Boston College. You know, probably you know pretty astute. Her and her husband, they're kind of yuppies. They work for the government. Uh, they're going to retire at 55 in like a little over a decade. Totally believe January 6th was an insurrection. Mm -hmm. Totally believe that Joe Biden got 81 million votes and there was no evidence. They didn't understand the not standing thing. Uh, totally believe that Trump is guilty of all these crimes. <laughs> and I well, okay. Let, let's say you do believe that. Okay? okay. And this is what I was saying. My friend who actually said the word insurrection. That's because he was in New York during the pandemic. So people in New York during the pandemic, that's a bunch of laptop job drug addicts. I mean, my buddy's not that, so it's weird, but it is the lifestyle there. And so that's the that's the city where you didn't know Obama didn't do a good job the whole time. You just didn't know. Why would you even learn? <laughs> you would be like, he did the best he could. I don't know, whatever. I live in New York. and what it, It's a, a city based on not seeing things to survive, like a prison, Okay. You gotta just not see shit. You learn that real quick to not dry snitch by looking at something. <laughs> what I, like that's how you get by. And you're like, yeah, I saw a guy fisting. You know, I was my hour a guy fisting his own asshole in the subway. 
uh, you know, like that's uh, that's New York. That's what you see. What do you what do you want? And um, and so that that instinct, that survival thing. It's a and I don't know if it's always has been thus or if it's just because of the acceleration of shit now. But that instinct is uh, I mean, it's like it's just pure prison instinct, like. You, you, you got a government job and you're all set and you got to just like, whatever, I don't need people making waves right now. Just go along with the thing because our family's set. We're going to be fine because we have our pension or whatever the fuck. You know, that's a unique one. That's not even like your Howard Stern, Bill Maher kind of retard. Where they're, <laughs> they're just like so wealthy and they're so like narcissist and have all this shit and like inflated sense of shit that... I, I realized why I kind of got lost that was because I didn't go that far in it. You know, like once you get farther and farther in it, and that's like your entire reason for living, you're a guy that rents black hookers most of the time for your companionship, right? Not Stern, uh, Maul. And you're like, and I hate kids, and I'm pro abortion because it is murder. <laughs> and he, he was on pro death down the line. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and it, it's like a perfectly normal thing. <laughs> it's perfectly reasonable. No, dude, Doug Stanhope, who I love, awesome comic, his big thing when he was joke about overpopulation. So th these are the natural kind, especially if you grew up somewhere around people that are dumb as shit, okay? And uh, and it, and it, the, the whole society is based on see who you're better than and look down on them and, um, you know, keep trying to raise yourself so you can look down on more people. That's the always present subtle message of one of the most important parts of being alive. <laughs> okay. So then people, and so, you know, and it makes you stupid. Like, like, um, I didn't, I didn't understand that podcasts would be a big thing. Cause we all worked for like, and I remember like, uh, and YouTube's, I remember that on Amy's show. Cause there was so, some magician was like, they stole this bit. I don't want you to watch YouTube. Like, do you understand? Like I, I didn't, didn't watch YouTube. I remember seeing the posters, for it with some like gay kid who's like, yeah, you're great, Tyler something. And I'm like, what was this for like slow people? What the fuck is this shit? So <laughs> I didn't watch completely it. Taken I over. didn't know anything about it. Okay. I didn't start watching it until years after the best years of it were done <laughs> for starting a living or whatever. So there were no, no stealing of it. And by the way, the bit was some hacky bullshit that I didn't think they should have even had in the first place, of course. And, uh, but the, the arrogant, thing is like, I'm on real, I work for real stuff. I'm not looking at your stupid thing. Then I found out a long time later that a bunch of shows, if they're competitive enough um, uh, and the environment's shitty enough, yeah, they will go and steal from, they'll go specifically to steal from shit. But I've never, I'm good at writing, dude, so it wouldn't even occur to me to do, and it wouldn't occur to me the desperation people would do to stay in and, you know, it's funny, I'd even heard stories about uh, Paul Mercurio, who I always got along with. He was a warm-up guy at Daily Show, but he used to be a writer. He got caught stealing by Jon Stewart. Really? He would wait. Suppose, this is what I heard, okay? I don't know the story, but I think it's true because they made him the – he was a great crowd warm-up guy, so they made him the crowd warm-up guy and didn't fire him, you know, to not – but it is like – the story I heard was he, he was um, – he would wait to see who turned in what you know, when they put all their shit in sure. and then he would like copy it and like put his, so on the John top. would see it first. And um, I guess John Stewart saw through that pretty quick. Cause it doesn't seem like a great point. Dude, every, anybody I ever worked for that was any good, especially if they're a comic, they knew exactly who wrote what fucking jokes. They made it a point to know who wrote what, or they, if they didn't have you mark your initials next to it, cause mm -hmm. a lot of you, then they would find out. Cause you know, it's a show with your name on it. So you kind of give a shit. It's a really stupid plan. But that's like a little desperate move, right? And um, anyway, whatever. So they made him the up. Uh, so obviously, that's a real thing that happened that I knew about. And then I would still like, like I don't know, like you know. And then there would be things like, uh, so uh, what's who's the guy who did uh, that? That's it. Like, um, Giannis Papas used to have his trans character. Okay, I'm not. I'm not aware, but okay. It was a great character. <laughs> I mean, real is it Dominican? Not Puerto Rican, Dominican. And like, okay. that's it though. But that's it. Like, it was really funny. Giannis does great characters. Saturday Night Live had the Dominican kid they hired, who I know, who was like a nice guy. That's a saying that Domin they go, that's it. That's like that is a saying. And I know SNL had to have had a discussion about 
because Giannis Pop has been in New York for years. Uh-huh. Okay. And can I watch people argue about they took this bit and whatever? And I'm like, I know what happened. They sat and had a conversation, right? And this kid is, and and the thing he's doing in the SNL sketch, besides saying that's it, he's being just like a fucking Dominican. I want to say a chick. I don't know. I can't remember if he was a ch- even a dressed up like a woman. He might have been. Um, so saying that's it, they probably had a discussion and they went, okay, well he's Dominican, so he has more right to it culturally to say that's it, and it's not the same character, right? It, it, and I'm, I, I promise you they had a conversation like that. But isn't it like so cutthroat in places like SNL? That's what you constantly- You could also just not do that part because somebody already does it. You also have that <laughs> option. You know? uh, uh, from every time I've seen any honest interview with people like Brewer, Schneider, um, you know, every time, they, they're they always saying how cutthroat it was in that room and how it was some of the- Yes, and I've never heard a good thing about SNL from, I work a bunch of people used to write for SNL and um, it supposedly it's different now, but I don't think that it is. I bet it's the same fucking nightmare. And um, when I was in New York, I saw a bunch of my friends at work there. I saw I ain't seen Shay in a long ass time. I fucking love that dude, Mike J. I always love Mike J. Um, and him and a bunch of writers were sitting there at the table. And uh, Rosebud Baker was there. So people that I like, I know them and like them. Her grandfather is James Baker. You know that? No, I did not know that. <laughs> Yeah, and that's why I'm like, Rosebud, your grandfather James Baker? I mean, that's pretty recently in New York when I was this show. And so when I walked in, so, like, uh, I can't remember who else was sitting there, but I mainly know Rosebud and Mike, and whatever, they're, they're all right. They're just hanging out at the cell. And uh, so I'm like, all right, what's cool to talk about with them, you know, because I know New York's full of fucking vax mandate fucking let's all just stop talking about the masking and the, Bro, the, the, the and that's the craziest thing to me like the, what right. she kept bringing up is that i texted her on may fit or i'm sorry march 15th before everything closed down and she was Who? at dinner my friend that i was talking to you yeah. about in new york i texted her i go hey they're about to shut everything down are you ready for this and so she was very well aware that i texted her beforehand she still was talking about it four years later she even talked about how she thought it was funny and didn't believe me. And then it happened. And yet still, like, I'll give you an example. I went to their wedding. It's got to be 15 years ago or whatever. And I gave them my documentaries, right? <laughs> and they brought up the fact they still had the documentaries I gave them, but they were still in the same bag that I gave them to <laughs> sealed in the basement. <laughs> and they were on lockdown. <laughs> I was just like, so wait a minute. I got that right. You've known me for years, and you still didn't go check out anything I've said. I, ever. I'm, now I'm especially not going to go check out what you said because you got that right. <laughs> you, that's where you're not. A, that's where you're thinking like a poor person. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so, uh, like, why would you go poking around for more things that you're going to be right about? Uh, anyway, <laughs> I didn't know what to talk to you know, and I'm like, oh, well, here's a fun, fun conversation anybody can enjoy. P Diddy. Uh, the P. Diddy shit, which is all come because I've been blathering about that for like three years, okay? And um, so I figure that's a thing, you know, I said the weekend update was going to maybe mention something. I, it didn't occur to me. No, I'm not saying any of them said this or they're in some way involved, but I bet you it will not come up on SNL because I'm sure Lauren is friends with him in some way, or the NBC is like, much like the OJ shit. I'm sure that's not, but I didn't think of this at the time. And um. So I bring it up, and then the younger dude, I can't remember his name. He's a black dude. I like he's very nice. He's this gay guy right there. And and he's but he said this to me. Fuck, what's his name? Anyway, he was shit faced, okay? And um, but I, when I brought up P. Diddy, it was all like weird that I brought it up. It was like weird. And I was and I'm like, I think the raid had happened. Well, maybe it hadn't happened yet, the raid. The raid hadn't happened, but the shit was in the news. Mm-hmm. Because I was like, oh, wow. Because I've been doing this joke about how, uh, like, why is rap music so misogynistic? They always used to say when I was, when P, you know, the height of Diddy and all. Sure. And uh, I'm like, oh, it, well, now we know why. Because a fuck ton of rappers are gay and they have to fuck pussy for work and it fucking sucks. <laughs> so that comes out in their art and their raps. They're like, I fucking hate pussy. <laughs> Money's better than because I was kind of like pussy better than money, and I thought there was something wrong with me, but I think I just wasn't gay. Oh, so <laughs> you know, that, uh, yeah. And then, like, if I had to be gay for work, I'd probably write homophobic raps. 
you know, butthole ain't shit. The Boondocks nailed that way, yeah. way back in the day. They had that whole episode of the DL and the rapping, and you know, of course, the guy actually because Wendy it. Williams was the Alex Jones of who's gay back then <laughs> before Boondocks. She was the Alex Jones of her day of who's gay and rap, and all of them. The answer is all of them, <sighs> nearly all of them. Um, and uh, yeah, so. But the one kid, he goes, oh, that's funny. Are you talking about black people things? But I love you. Like, so, so I'm like, wait, what? So, so he wasn't mad or saying anything to attack me. He, but. No, he uh, automatically went to identity yes. politics because that's the exactly guy's right. black. Yeah. It's not because he's a successful person in the entertainment industry and this shit is dirty, but right. suddenly, and, and that's crazy. Okay. So that's the, that's the, the, and my girlfriend at the store by us that she shops at, she said, like, she's buying her one roast chicken, and she was like, called it him and a non binary guy. But again, not attacking her. He wasn't, he's just, he goes, he goes, oh, you just assumed his gender because they, it's like hiccups. Like, you're programmed to go, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, he, they get like woke hiccups, and they, and it, it's programming. You could see the, the absolute. Now I realize when you say all that trigger, oh, were you triggered? Now it's like an insult if you got triggered. When that horseshit started making the rounds through fucking rich Twinkies in Ivy League schools, um, everybody knew that that thing, that effect they were talking about is not caused by a word. It's caused by sense memory, such as a random smell or a color. And that's what brings back trauma. This is already known. And now we know it again somehow. They become full circle of knowing that's how it is again. But I think that was a very deliberate thing. And it was trigger as in, trigger words and that was part of the programming because what, what last time i saw you know i was i was telling you a project monarch when i'd read about it i'm like this just looks like a metaphor for society which it is <laughs> which it is mm -hmm. oh we, i'm at the mass production end of it <laughs> i'm living at the where that's trickle it's matriculated so you have a few prototype people that you work exactly what's the best traumas and the best shit to fucking program the fuck out of people and, and it's not invented by the CIA, obviously, or whatever. That's the goal. Gore Vidal said the goal, every society is total control. So these are religions and every fucking thing you could imagine to control your goddamn behavior because humans are programmable. And uh, especially when they're little, especially when they're little. Okay. So how do we get you young? And everything's built around that. And do you think our amazing uh, uh, forward-thinking government is going to just drop their MK Ultra program? Like we had to do it because the Russians were doing it, and then when they stopped, <laughs> we stopped. <laughs> and then what they did was perfect it, and that's why I'm watching people who will be otherwise rational about all kinds of things. You can watch them get their fucking programming hiccups. I just watch them fucking. We, we, you're talking about a black thing. I'm like, I'm like, I, it, dude, I still like haunts me thinking about that. Cause I'm like, that is such a pro. So like you got it. it this is the comics table, dude. Where like, we would have been talking about, first of all, I made it my ringtone. P Diddy fucking Meek Mills up the ass. My ringtone is oh, a joke. Oh, you did that. <laughs> yeah, be, to be, I, I put a lot of time into it. Well, not a lot. I use garage band. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny to me, I thought it'd be really funny, you know, yeah. and it was, it was funny, but I do regret it a lot because <laughs> if I'm thinking about something and I get just, it's my text tone, dude, and I just get texted and it sounds like that lady that was stomping grapes, that viral reporter and she fell out of the grape tub. That's the noise Meek Mill was making. They're not making love. And I, so I'll just be, <laughs> just be thinking about something. I hear ow, 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 shit! like, uh, Oh God. I just keep, I just keep my ringer off most of the time now. I should just change it. You should. But I just I just <laughs> I, I don't know what's how I'm programmed. I know something is coming up where I'm going to have that ringer on. And it's going to be really. It's, I'm really going to be glad I did. Like I'm going to forget I have it on there. I'm going to be talking to somewhere. Something being recorded. Hopefully something important. And then that's just going to burst out of nowhere. That sound. Well, I would hope also kind of like it may be like a Thanksgiving dinner or something like that with a lot of people around. Next time I see mother and we're going out, yes. I will, yeah. when, I'm, when I'm having coffee with mother, mm -hmm. I will bring it. <laughs> Wait, so uh, anyway, so, so the P. Diddy thing is so amazing to me because uh, that's why Justin Bieber 
was uh, acting out when we were all. Remember how we all judged him for not being a clean cut? I never judged the kid. Like when I'm I see joking. that, I don't. I never gave a shit. Yeah, me neither. But remember, America judged him. Well, let me say this. Remember, Simone Bales didn't show up for the Olympics uh, at That's the very right. end, and everybody shit all over her. And I'm like, she and was she molested, got molested by, that, by Nick. Again? Yeah, she was one of the major Dude, people. I thought I was remembering wrong because I couldn't believe the the night and day. I just heard this Larry Nasser disgusting story. Yeah, and she was fucking viciously molested by that guy, and then so and also whatever her fucking you know. I don't know if she's on Ritalin or what the fuck yeah. she's taking, but from a prescription. Yeah. And they don't allow it in the country she's in. And what's the point? If she's on that, first of all, that's like a kind of speed they give people that if you go off that, you're going to have an effect. For the Olympics, she's going to just not have that. Mm -hmm. her, it's not getting her wired. It's getting her normal. Yeah. Okay? And, and again, just yeah. that trauma associated with the Olympics. When I saw everybody acting that way towards her, I was like, you know what? Fuck you guys. Like, you don't know, like, what that, like, this guy literally, apparently hundreds of victims, and she was one of them. I'd, I'd probably be pretty You know why averse. they did it? Because they're all programmed. I watch it, I'm watching it now with Israel bullshit. Mm -hmm. All the fucking channels on YouTube that are in my thing, especially if they lean towards the right side of the aisle, you can watch how they did their calculus for what side they're on any given issue. So the, a lot of them, to me, it looks like they're going, okay, this larger creator that I may one day do a deal with, which way are they going on this? Because I want to be in line with, with the money. So you don't got to... The money is the already the perfect fucking devil influence because you're going to not cheat yourself out of money down the line. So you're not going to just blurt out shit. Mm -hmm. What that kid was saying to me by going, you're talking about black people things, is where he his particular zone in the fucking prison planet is not a profitable thing to do what I did because that's the circles they run in. It's not profitable to notice the... Pro the insane shit going on in the city and to, and, and like I saw two different videos. One was where Colin Jost at that press, that press dinner where the press and the, and the government, they, sure. you know, once a year they have this sacred dinner where they acknowledge that they're all in on it yeah. together. The press core dinner. Yeah. The press core dinner, which I've never understood why that happens or how that's okay. Why no one sees a massive problem with this. Uh, but I remember no one boycotted, you know, because all the people like boycott because of Palestine. As far as I can remember, the only person that ever boycotted that was Trump. <laughs> it wasn't for Palestine. The only person that was like, I'm not showing up to that shit was Trump, to his credit. Right. And uh, and Colin, so first I see Colin do two jokes up front that were very decent jokes. He said um, uh, something about he didn't bring Michael Che because, like, the president, he want, he's losing all his black support. You know, like, he had two good fucking things. So I thought he might, I was like, oh, he probably did a, Hit, and then, and he probably did during his set. He probably hit both sides. Uh -huh. I'm sure he did. But at the very end, he had a heartfelt thing about like decency. What I'm, what I'm voting for with Biden is decency and my grandfather. So he made, so he had to do his, like, I don't think he, I don't know if Colin viewed it this way. It looked like very heartfelt, but I view it as what they call a humiliation ritual. After you make fun of the uh, whatever king and he had to do his heartfelt piece of shit, whatever. Mm -hmm. To make it okay for the little tiny things he said up up at the top, and especially when you go decent, he went to MIT that motherfucker. Okay, these aren't stupid fucking people. So, so I know that they're on purpose, not knowing shit. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're not knowing shit on purpose because it's not profitable. And also, is he married to fucking Scar Joe? Is he Scarlett Johansson's husband? Yeah, Just? and so she's in her like milf years. I mean, he did fuck that milf. He, he did. That's his kid, right? I, you know, so, I'm so not into so the he's Hollywood a writer thing. I don't guy, know. And he was always a nice guy who I always liked him fine. His face bugged me, but it's not his fault anyway. <laughs> I never held that against him that he has like a small amount of face. Hey, he his. looks like he plays collegiate tennis. Like he's got that very. It's like a better version of a Charlie Kirk face. There it's you go. Very, there you go. It's a very Reed Selig, Reed Selig men face from uh, <laughs> that lying stripper that said that they called her uh, race words. You know that that team that everybody said was guilty and they weren't guilty. No, prosecuted because they're white. Didn't Remember? see that one. No. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Well, yes, I said did. I didn't see it. I don't know if I saw it. It was a big case. Um, they had a black stripper. These guys look like every douchebag frat boy that you were being told was a rapist. Mm -hmm. Around in the Glee times, whenever Glee was being popular, um, Nifong, that was the name of the DA, is in uh, I don't know, Carolina or something. Mike Nifong, mm -hmm. he he got disbarred because of this. 
Okay. And they, uh, they, he set these kids up. They hadn't done anything wrong. This chick was just a crazy. She, had, she ended up going to prison for trying to kill her boyfriend. Oh. And uh, it was a big, big news story. They had to sue about it. And there's a document. You're just forgetting it, but I'm telling you, there's no way you didn't see it when it came. I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't remember that. Let me ask you this. Since we're mm-hmm. talking about like narratives and uh, whatnot stories, have you covered the uh, Baltimore school AI story yet? <laughs> What's that? Yo, it's the craziest shit ever. So there was a vice principal there that uh, had to step down because audio came out of him dropping n bombs, just talking. Oh, like- then there was somebody, and and okay. So that was uh, another teacher was doing it to frame him. Somebody else, yeah, in like, the school yeah, district. Yeah, and I saw the teacher, and it was like some black nerd guy that didn't like. What did they not like him about? It had to be like uh, he talked about Diddy too much as a white man. I, I have uh, no I, idea, I, but it was scary to me that it went that far, and that this guy. I mean, he had to hire security. People wanted to kill him. I mean, if you mm-hmm. listen, I I listened to what was supposedly him, and I mean, you were like, holy shit, and all of it was fake. And it mm-hmm. wasn't even like students. It was some kind of academic rival that didn't like the guy. And we're in mm-hmm. that, that I heard that on the road. It's the most York. coveted position there is working in a Baltimore public school. <laughs> you you got to understand how cutthroat it is for the, at that, at those levels. <laughs> and that was kind of the point that this was such a low level and it was so dangerous. This hasn't even entered into the political spectrum yet. Uh, have you seen that the Ukraine has now created their own digital avatar, a woman of color, to instruct on the military operations? Would you like to see? Hold up. Yes, I would. Now, remember the other trans woman spokesman who I believe has yes. transitioned? This is the replacement. <laughs> what happened to that dude who's now a dude again? Onto a new mission? Uh, I don't know, but I can show you this. This is the new AI avatar. Um, uh, yeah. So, again, this is the AI spokesperson to provide timely updates amid the war with Russia that looks like a real-life influencer. So, apparently... so that influencer is not for Ukrainians. That's for us. Because there ain't no way they would be putting that for Ukrainians. uh, That's how I felt about it. But apparently this is based on some celebrity over there. Uh, But Victoria Xi is not a real person. Uh, it is AI now. It's it's in this conflict. And most people, unfortunately, have kind of put this conflict to the side because of how egregious and crazy the Israeli conflict has gotten out of control. Yeah, well, they're all dead now, so what's the point? They're all a new group of people to kill, right? Everybody, they already wiped out. What I, I mean, that's so that's going to be, I imagine, they're like, oh, they wiped out a generation of men, probably women too. Uh, they're going to be replaced with uh, self-serve kiosks. Ukraine is going to be an AI country of just AIs. And, uh, you know, then Israel, I, I don't know what the fuck, how this is going to end up. Um, I, I'm guessing they're going to wrap up killing as many as they can of Palestinians, send the rest of them here and the other countries. Um, that uh, it was what I think the goal is. Um, whatever internal fight, which I'm guessing the two factions are uh, the WEF versus the APAC type people. Because that's your two sides. Like like Brian Stelter's a WEF and uh, Anderson Cooper's a APAC. <laughs> okay? And this is like, it's pitting brother against brother, some of these. <laughs> I mean, I'll be because honest. Because they all went to young leader school, and now look at them. I don't think it's going school. anywhere, Kurt. I think that, you know, there's no ceasefire. The, obviously, the only bargaining chips the other side has is this 100-plus hostages that haven't been released. They cut the deal before and immediately started getting bombed again. Um, we're using AI to kill people. The, this is the first time I've ever seen Netanyahu and the other leaders out there openly saying there is no two-state solution. That's done. Well, if that's done... Well, he then- said it when he funded Hamas, he was saying it. Well, all the way back then, when we were talking about putting Hamas into leadership, it was pretty apparent you can't have a two-state solution without a government with a military, right? And that's why they they funded uh, Hamas and promoted it back then. A lot of people, that fails to even ring on their deaf ears. My biggest thing is this. Israel's no, no, going nowhere. It, they hear it. Yo, he, the, because this is my number one thing with my friends that yeah. support this shit. Yeah, I always bring that up first because I ain't letting that go. Yeah, and and they so when I was at Roseanne's at Thanksgiving, I fucking love Roseanne, but um, I haven't talked to her about this Israel shit. I don't even want to, but I don't want to because let me tell you, a bunch of my friends 
are like, yay, woke is over, and now fucking uh, it's gonna. It's insane. I mean, woke is over. That's October seventh. I was right. That was the last. That was what the thing that killed woke. It was October fucking seventh when a bunch of Ashkenazi Jews realized that they are considered white, and they're like, hold the phone. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> they thought that they're you know Ben Shapiro was ringing the alarm that hey, we're only gonna lose our. We're being, we are white, but we're also a minority, and we're both. And this is what this everybody's scrambling for their Ivy League shit and their little whatever they're gonna grab. And uh, that that idea of they make an excuse for that piece of shit, Netanyahu. See, I think if you funded the terrorist organization that it attacked you and whatever, I think it's your fucking fault and you shouldn't get to kill all the people that kind of look like them that you keep in a fucking concentration Well, well again, Kurt, they're not talking about the fact that U.S. Special Forces were already on the ground on October 7th. They were there. That we have more U.S. Special Forces on the ground after the fact. And uh, there was just recently a space uh, over there. We're not talking about this country. We have sent U.S. soldiers over there. It's not just funding the weapon systems. Yeah, I know. A guy lit himself on fire for that. Remember a guy lit himself on fire because he found out he was going to have to go participate in the murder? And, and you know what? I never thought that 2024 was going to be the year of American immo immolations, right? <laughs> like, you didn't just get three. one. I count three. I count three. Okay. So historically, you know, zero to one is about, it shows things aren't going well. <laughs> a, a guy lighting himself on fire. Bro. And if you think in the 60s, that's like a, a Buddhist monk. Like, I'll be honest, I don't give a shit about Buddhist monks do goofy shit all the time mummify themselves like themselves on so and that was a big cultural thing it, it made posters of this is three not wearing fucking scar robes and diapers people like regular people <laughs> do you, you understand the magnitude of a the guy in the air force which i i've watched uh i don't like that motherfucker uh short fataco <laughs> short fat otaku talk about these people that light themselves on fire. He's such a little fat Canadian neoliberal cunt. It actually makes me mad listening to a him talk, you know? I don't know who Where he is. People, well, it's, in my, it's just off my feed. Okay. As people where I'm like, uh, I'll watch, it'll be interesting. Then I'm like, what the fuck is this, dude? And he's one of them. And he, he's one of them like, like he there's, there's not a problem. Stop being extreme. And where I'm like, you know, it's a lot of that. Like, don't act all dramatic like there's a fucking... What is this, David Icke stuff? Like, you should be listening to every cuckoo story at this point because, by way of a for instance, uh, P. Diddy in 2018, I watched a crazy guy being interrogated named Jonathan Adi. Did you ever see it? No, wait, I think, wait, is he, was he like a younger black guy? No, okay, so maybe a white not. guy. I thought his accent was a retarded accent, but it wasn't. He's South African, he's from the dancing. If you're, if you ever seen these pornos. The Dancing Bear. Where it's oh, like the, I know the difference. Dancing Bear. Reality Kings. Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, I don't think those are real parties, by the way. Oh, don't, you don't? <laughs> oh, hi, you know, I back in the day, I remember Kimbo. Kimbo Slice was actually fronted by those guys because he was uh, security for them. And he used to be in a lot of those videos, the party, well, the, in the VIP line, not so much the mm -hmm. Dancing Bear. Yes. He had to handle those women when they got out of line. So wait, so, <laughs> so when... um. This guy ran into a Trump hotel in Miami wearing a wetsuit in the video. I fi I'll find the video to send you because I saw this in 2018. It was hilarious. Okay, so this guy, Jonathan Adi, who <laughs> he, you see him running in with a gun in this Trump hotel. All people are cleared out. He's putting an American flag across the front desk. Of lights. Um, then he puts on a pair of socks. He's barefoot in his wetsuit. Okay. Then the next camera clip is him running through like this smooth, like marble floor with socks. <laughs> and they shoot, he slides on it. Dude, it. I mean, it's one of the funniest things. Like when I just watching it, I'm like, Jesus Christ. Okay. So then he's being interrogated by uh, whatever. I don't know if it's FBI or Secret Service. And he's going, uh, yeah, well, that was basically he's trying to get a warning to Trump that they're after him. He goes, so I was a sex slave of P. Diddy, okay? And he's B. Diddy's in the boule. You know what that is? And, and this agent, you can see, is like, what, what the hell? He goes, the black Illuminati. So it's like the BET Illuminati. Oh. He goes, P. Diddy, he's gay. DJ Khaled, he's gay. He's a Hamas supporter. He's gay. 
uh, what's the other fucking guy? Uh, the one that took his name from the real drug dealer, Rick Ross. Rick Ross. Rick Ross, he's gay. He wasn't a sex slave like he was owned. He was like being paid to be a sex slave. Okay. Yeah, he's and, a call boy, call guy. Okay. So the thing, and he's saying this perfectly calm and not like he's not at all crazy, even though everything he's saying is the crazy. 2018, you're like, oh, this guy. First of all, you're watching a video of him, of his hijinks, followed by this interview. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it stuck out. So then all of a sudden, I started hearing the, you know, a few years ago, 2020, I was seeing all about Diddy. And all of a sudden, all this stuff comes out. And then I went back and looked at that video again of that guy, and I went, oh, okay, that's verified. All these things happened. All these things came out, except I haven't heard the Boulay mentioned, mm -hmm. which is, I haven't heard BET. I always bring it up because I think it's hilarious that diversity killed the Illuminati too. Typical. It sounds like it's out of Louisiana, though. I want you like I want like it. It is out like, of Louisiana. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. It's absolutely. I, why? Where else would it be from? It's some know. kind of hoodoo. It's not called voodoo, They're, and they don't have voodoo doll. I didn't know how all this shits is bullshit that you've heard from. It's all from movies, mm -hmm. from our goddamn North Korea level accuracy of <laughs> Hollywood is North Korea level bad in terms of being accurate. And don't even. Uh, it's funny when I think about. It, I'm like. And then regularly they just put lies. Well, yeah, for the story, it had to be. You're putting this for the story. Like, what? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm watching this guy talk about it. So everything he said, and he's now the names that he mentioned, he started mentioning other names, okay? Such as uh, uh, Mis Ben Miselis. You know who that is? No, I don't. From the Miselis brothers. He goes, he's a lawyer, Ben Miselis. He's connected to Hillary Clinton. The Miselis brothers are Democratic, like, like, uh, who's the guy who made Media Matters, that piece of shit? Oh, yeah, you're talking about uh, David Brock. Alephantis is David Brock. Yeah, Alephantis' okay. boyfriend, yeah. So David Brock's not the only David Brock. There's a bunch of aspiring, despicable, type 1 reptoid parasite lizard creature, metaphorically or literally, I don't know which. Don't care. That's what they are. They're the scum of the earth. They grow them in D.C., okay? Three brothers, they're like Jonas Brothers of, like, propaganda to work for the Democrats for smears and shit. Mm -hmm. And when Joe Rogan, remember, spoke about how his doctor gave him ivermectin and they recolored his face. Yeah. Everything Joe Rogan said during the pandemic, everything he said and people who didn't, weren't against him, my uh, Josh Zepp, who I like a lot, used to be on CNN, he corrected Rogan. Josh was wrong. Rogan was right. Every single thing, because Rogan looked it up. And Rogan was the focus of the don't do your own research. How dare you, a guy with muscles. A guy that physically takes care of his body and has made social commentary that made people laugh for decades. How dare he have an opinion? Well, I, I'll see people attack Rogan two ways. There's one, fuck you because of your, like, your sports. Uh, it's crazy. And how dare you question. And it's just purely, like, fucking, he's like their Rodney Dangerfield at their country club in a way for some reason. So, so it's that, okay? And then from the other end, our friends of mine are like, he, well, he's not funny. Why is he the number one podcast? His comedy's not funny. Like, dude, first of all, um, I'll say this for Rogan's comedy. I've had to lose at least four four premises that he got to. He already had jokes about mm -hmm. that are very unusual premises. Mm -hmm. You probably didn't watch any of his comedy or whatever. And I rarely watch any of my friends uh, besides the tell. I almost never. I haven't seen Love him a tell. Time, I've seen him live a couple times, actually. That's my hero of comedy, so I always watch. But what I'm saying is, to even like, so I'm not going to take nothing away from his comedy. If I had to drop jokes for thing, because that's an original, he's original. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the reason his podcast is big is nothing to do with com. Do you think that's why he, first of all, what he does is so much more important than anything with stupid fucking comedy. Okay. And my, the people that have said that to me are people that are invariably in New York <laughs> because they're, they are like, like I said, New York trains you to not see a thing that you should see because you want to not be traumatized every second of, of your life by sights and smells. I always had, I jumped on subway tracks one time to get an iPod mini off the tracks. You did not. I, yeah. And I jumped right back up and a Sikh, an Indian guy just looked at me like this. <laughs> like he couldn't believe it. Do you That's think I was going to ride the subway? I had a long ass subway ride. Do you think I was going to sit there listening to the sounds? Of, of humanity on a fucking subway going from Washington Heights deep into fucking the Jefferson stop 
But okay, no. <laughs> I'd rather die. I would rather die than hear those. So I know the feeling of not wanting to see reality mm -hmm. very well, you know? And um that's why they gotta find ways to trash him because he's like like I said, I know that guy's one of the best people I ever met in in like entertainment business where he ha I've never seen him be like an ego motherfucker people. Okay. And he was awesome to me him. when I met him. And this is well before the podcast took off. You know, I, yeah. my Rogan story is, uh, you know, I kind of got him and Alex Jones back together because Jones had a problem with his, uh, well, that N word thing Jones had picked out, right? He Originally. didn't like, he was pissed off about, um, fear factor. And especially, I don't know if you remember Robbie, I think it was Robbie Williams. Remember the pop star? He had that mm -hmm. one where they were putting metal, metal, uh, things through his skin and he didn't like the torture porn of it. And then he would also be like, you know, he hangs out with LeVay's kid. <laughs> like, cause he'd, he'd, he'd hung out with LeVay's kid a couple times. I'm like, dude, you know, and this is before the podcast. I go, you don't understand how culturally significant he is. I go, UFC is only going to explode. I go, his comedy is still top tier. I remember I was watching the gorilla fuck your girlfriend bit, uh, from one of his, which was excellent. And eventually they did, they got back together. And in 2000, I think it was either, I think it was 2009, uh, UFC came to Dallas and I got tickets to 103, and I got to go hang out with him and Ari Shafir and Eddie Bravo. And, you know, they were big time skeptical of me, you know, but they were, you know, Joe was awesome to me. It was fucking great. I mean, yeah, he doesn't just believe any shit. No. And they, I believe crazier shit than he probably believes. Yeah. Yeah. I 100% believe crazier shit than he <laughs> believes. And that's not, I'm, I'm not talking about spaceship stuff, I'm talking about land news. <laughs> if you talk about Haiti, if you talk about what goes on in Haiti, mm -hmm. In fact, when I was on his show, he's like, oh, you conspiracy. I'm like, but dude, I'm just talking about current events in Haiti. That's not a conspiracy. I mean, that's, I haven't even, we haven't even got to my crazy shit, I think. <laughs> you, know, you know, I watched you on there. You killed it. And then you did Jones uh, the same day that that was dropped. You killed it there. Um, oh, so Alex, so when I was talking, because, okay, he brought up a good, uh, a very good point on there about, um, Cause I want to know about the old religion, you know, the thing that Mark Passio talks about. Sure. And, uh, uh, because, and, and I, and I've looked now I've been on such a crazy ass, like going, looking through shit. Uh, especially like, because I didn't know like Gnosticism was like an insult kind of name. I didn't know that, like how Wahhabism is, or these are called Jehovah's Witnesses, Millerites or Je Jehovah's or whatever, you know, like, it's like an insult name because you're being a big gano it all and people uh -huh. don't like you. <laughs> gano it all. Um, but uh, I was watching that guy, John Lash. Okay. And so I'll watch anybody's things. I just want to know their, their take on it because frequently, especially people are like Bible believers, like, like, uh, uh, um, okay. So Alex was talking about how these people think that they're channeling Zeus and, Artemis and you know all the Greek and Roman and I'm like 100 percent. I'm sure a bunch of these people think they're doing that in various little cults. I don't think they're all united because Christianity is not all. Nothing's united like that. There's sects of things, okay. But this guy John Lash said a thing that I suspect is true, which is yeah, they trace their lineage. I've said this before in here. People, I want to know what their Scientology, the top level. And they trace their lineage to Atlantis, right? And I suspect they're not from Atlantis, I must say, but I can <laughs> Oh, believe. do you? I, I yeah. also suspect they're not from it. I mean, that's Stanley, uh, or Manly P. Hall's uh, The Secret Doctrine. You know, he, he no, talks no, right. about it. So, so, so yeah. John Lesh is the only other guy I've seen saying this uh, uh, because I just look at it through a lens of being in a turn of the century weird sect, the Jehovah's Witnesses. The way we thought about, the way I thought about being a Christian was I was doing the original Christianity that Jesus did. Nobody else was. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we read the Bible, it's like one continuous book. Okay. It's, and then the story continues with you mm -hmm. at the end. Okay. Um, and, and when you're picturing what's going on back then, you're picturing a version of your own congregation in a way. Not exactly, but you know, you're projecting you yourself as the progenitor of the story. Of course, that's yeah. the that's the reason we have these fucking stories, right? So, so, uh, and John Lash said a thing, and he said it in these words though, where I'm like, oh, I, that's what I suspect. He goes, because if you study older shit than the Bible, which you should, if you want to, if you want to think old shit's real, you should look at the much older shit and see where everybody's cribbing from each other. 
okay? And um, a lot there, there's like a war of uh, from the start between the king and the priests. The middleman, it's like all this economics of the middleman to the unseen entity. And if the king is more important than the guy, because whoever could write, that's your first like magic is like you're storing information outside your brain that other people can't, okay? So now you, that's, that's an economy of that, okay? And so that forms a class. And then you can see an ancient, like whenever you're talking about Sumerian or all the old, uh, that's the priests fighting with the king about who the fuck is talking to God. They make little treaties here and there. Okay, you're the son of the God, but I have to talk. They all make deals that all through this fucking time. And around 1300 or whatever, I think is when he said, uh, I'm sure some soothsayer said, yeah, you actually have the bloodline of Atlantis. <laughs> like when you hear the story of Plato hearing about Atlantis from the Egyptians, mm -hmm. the Egyptians, if you think of Cleopatra or whatever, the Egyptians are world renowned for surviving and being admired by the places that absorb them. And I'll bet you a, a big way Egypt would do that. I bet you they would do it by sucking up and telling the people that conquered them, "Oh, you're actually our god for Ra," and that's <laughs> like you're right. That is like Jupiter, my god, and I am his son. <laughs> well, Egypt is smart; they have all the knowledge. I bet you. Now, I'm, that's not how John Lash put it, but but he, he put, like, I think there are actually. Uh, I think one, one there are ETs or whatever. I think they're all con men. I think the universe is a goddamn internet <laughs> and and you pick up all kinds of phishing scams you know like to fish your account you got to get tricked and let them into your account right and then they can fucking start taking shit from you and uh and i think the collective unconscious i said this on an alex jones thing that's the original internet collective unconscious well it's almost like and, the vampire tale yeah. right they can only do harm yep. to you if you let them in so you have to you have to let them in first right you have to acquiesce to it right and that could be also you know metaphorically like see that's what the thing of uh if you watch uh jaguar right talk about p diddy like why is he got fuck people in the ass that don't want to be fucked in the ass and she goes because that's your dominion <laughs> that's your that's your house he's in <laughs> he's draining power out of you it's good i i feed on a you know i like think of it as more symbiotic not being a parasite but if i'm doing a show you right? feed on the energy of those around you for sure and then I'm trying to put it back. Well, I'm trying to build it into something, right? And sometimes if you don't feel like doing your job, like times when I've 100% failed going on stage is I assumed I was going to feed. I didn't come with my own energy to feed in first. Mm -hmm. I wasn't being in the moment and, and analyzing what, I, what it is I'm looking at right now rather than trying to make, make it a crowd from last night or make it a something. Instead of just like, okay, what am I dealing with in this moment and not projecting anything onto it? Okay, because I need to have a clear view. I got to check my like driving and check my mirrors and wherever, see where I'm at. Okay, I'm not closing my eyes. And, but when I, people do this all the time, when you fuck up something, it's, it's not being in the moment, you know? And uh, 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 it, it, I, I won't bring, like, if, they need, if I need to provide energy to, to generate it from the crowd, I need to be prepared to do it. Mm -hmm. So the ego trip. And times where I've, I've had a melt, I've had a Kramer meltdown with races that you never even heard of. <laughs> well, that's Once good to know. First... That makes me like you so much more, Kurt, that you've had those racial meltdowns. Be, Kurt, we talk about black Not really things. racial. <laughs> I'm, I'm terming it that way. But there, it's just New York's a diverse place. And, and you know, I found out certain Caribbean people don't like my kind of humor. Because <laughs> uh, they're very, they're very much multi-level marketing kind of people. And they don't like you attacking that. They don't like you attacking Amway timeshare bullshit. They tie Jesus into it. So now you're disrespecting religion. It's like all that talk about prosperity gospel infecting a group of people. Oh, the Caribbean, all the shit that they've been through from colonization and then the, the hopes and dreams of like those are those are black people that got a goddamn shot first. Well, I tell you when something. I would do my joke about hey, good news. What I had a joke, what black people do you know? They're gonna fall for that. Remember they go black people should get the shots sure. first? The, 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 the Caribbean? I go, yeah. My old joke is like, good news, black people. We just emergency approved. <laughs> and you get to try it first. Okay. And two black ladies in a corner at the comedy store get mad partway through. I didn't even get to that part. I'm like, and so that's what I'm talking about being in the moment. So I'm like, one was a nurse and one was a doctor. They're sisters. I'm like, are you Caribbean? I knew immediately what was going on here. You the Listen, I'm talking about black people, ladies, okay? I'm not talking about your, 
fucking. They're, they're no, not Caribbean even. Black. Wait, 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 wait. Caribbean's black, but I'm, when I say black, I'm talking about American. You Tuskegee experiment heritage, black, not the Caribbean where you're still Catholic, like your goddamn Filipinos. They, they they're Catholic and shit. Okay. That's a whole different ass fucking thing, even though it's black. I, these are nuances that you only get from being in the moment and, and a little bit interviewing them, and then you almost psychically can figure out what the deal is very quickly. You do a hot read. And they were laughing because they're, they're laughing because I picked out their whole thing. Everybody goes into timeshare or like nursing. Same as like a lot of, a lot of working class whites would become x ray techs, right? Oh, I hate that. They, and you're not wrong about that. That's so true. Metzger, yeah. I got I to gotta wrap this up because I got to go pick up oh, the shit. niece at work. But before we go. Okay, here's the last thing I'll tell you that I realized from, okay? So to tie back to what Alex Jones talked about those things. So my girl does a podcast called Bad Art, and um, she talks about kind of weird art shit. And I, I did the last one, and she was talking about Athena. You know, the, uh, Athena. Sure, the goddess. the goddess, yes. Okay, and so... There's a lot of statues of this shit, and I didn't realize. So I'd heard the story of Arachne, the chick they turned into a spider because she could uh -huh. sew better than Athena. Like she bragged that she was better than Athena at the loom or whatever, like a rap battle of sewing. And Athena, you know, it's disrespectful to the gods to do that. And Athena, uh, so they had a contest. Okay, bitch. And it's an interesting story because Arachne was better than Athena, a goddess. She was better. Not only was she better, she sewed a picture of the rape of Europa. So that story is about how Poseidon, uh, Europa, who became a Gorgon, or I think, I think that's what it is. Uh, you know, she, uh, 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 it was like making fun of the God's story of Poseidon was like a Harvey Weinstein thing of Poseidon, right? Okay, it's like a soap opera, and and so uh, she got punished, Arachne, because of this disrespect of saying she's better than a goddess, being better than the goddess, making fun of all the worst crime, was sewing that tapestry. Okay, was like Julian Assange shit through mm -hmm. tapestry. That's the worst fucking crime. Documenting it. Um, yeah, and so they turned her into a spider, a arachnid, and um, uh, but Athena felt kind of bad. She's like she was good. Okay, and so that's why she made her a spider so she could still sew at least. Oh, okay, very nice yeah. of her. Yeah, yeah, and um, and the rape of Europa, by the way, the the uh, story was uh, this. Poseidon rapes this chick and then she gets turned into a Gorgon after she's been the victim of a god, okay? But there's actually two stories. The other story is she was trying to move up in whatever and she seduced him. And because, and when I realized, oh, because women are minors there, right? So much like you could be a 30-year-old woman, but you're a minor because you're still owned by your dad, so it's rape, mm -hmm. even if you wanted it. I get it. Like you'd say about a child, sure. statutory rape. Even if they consent, they can't consent. That's a kid. Think of the part of the world where a woman is never an adult, <laughs> right? So that's why it's a rape, a property theft. And now, and then she becomes a Gorgon because she did like a power play. So there's two different competing stories. Why? Because a bunch of feminists uh, in different, in the art world and in all the colleges, all the people who study myths, there's been an active campaign to change it so Athena's not a petty. See, the, these are about human nature, these stories, okay? Really what they are is the 48 laws of power set to myths. It's just the 48 laws of power. And and you know how the Simpsons used to be? Both the smartest people like it and get it and the dumbest people like sure. it and get it? That's what the myths are. There's something for everyone. If you're really smart, you can see it's a story about power and take something deep out of it. And that's what rulers get. If you're a, an idiot, you go, yeah, then Athena did this and then the sun and she chased it on a chariot through the moon, Right. That's what this shit is. Mm -hmm. They're encoding because I was blown away when she told me that there's this push to make Athena to change that mythology because I hadn't heard this other mythology. Okay. And I'm like, that's very strange. Why would anybody in this day and age be bothering to retcon fucking Greek myths? Who the fuck is still in that religion? Oh, a lot of people. Oh. Let me say this. Jay Dyer... Uh, he, he does the fourth hour of the Alex Jones show a ton. He's very much, I mean, he's a Christian for sure, but he's a theologian. He gets into yeah, all this. Stuff. I know that is, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He, uh, he actually requested me to ask you to get on that show. And I think you guys would have a great no, I'd discussion. Love to. I'd love to do that. So, I know who he is. I would love to talk to him. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, he actually met you at one of the behind the scenes at one of the Jimmy door events. He told me he was really nervous. He did. I met him. I met him at, uh, the one that, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. 
So I mean, what about Sam? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's got to happen uh, for sure. And then Door is coming to my neck of the woods at the end of June. I'd love to get him in studio and buy him a steak. Uh, we're definitely going to the show. But you guys got to just keep it up, man. You're killing it on every level. I have a choice. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't. By the way, I'm not. I don't. I'm not rich in any way, shape, or form. Like I have to work. I, I get it. I get. It. Listen, <laughs> I man, that's like, the other I thing. I don't own it. I'm one of them new Davos people that don't own nothing. I'm so happy, <laughs> bro. I love what I do. You know, and right now I got two shows. It's it's a little, yeah, you know, I'm on three hours a day. Uh, this is just kind of a side thing. But I intend to work for the rest of my life because I actually like what I do. And I, I assume you on some level, but maybe you're not touring for the rest all of your I life. Got, all I got, yeah, I am touring. All well, I got I'm saying forever. Yeah. Uh, and you can find, because um, me and Kyle are going to Mothership to do uh, Pussies Live. Me and Dunnigan are doing Pussies Live at Mothership from the uh, 12th through the 14th. And the Pussy's live shows are fucking great. We did them at Largo back in the day. And that's this ago. month or next month? This month. Oh, this month you're going to be down in Austin, Texas at the Mothership, 12th to 14th. And then uh, I'm, I'll be back at the Mothership probably in June or July. Okay. Oh, in July I'm back at the Mothership just doing my hour. Excellent. But Excellent. Uh, the Pussy's Live is like, I, I, that's like one of my favorite one of my favorite things to do is Pussy's Live. Like we, we those shows were, we had like a lot of people show up too that, like weird fans you wouldn't expect to have. I told you that the tick came. Patrick oh yeah, Wilbert you did came. tell me that. I love the tick. I'm not um, a dude from ah, uh, what band was it, dude? I'd like a shocking amount of people. I'll tell you who I love is a dude from uh, McGruber, uh, Ryan Flippy. Yes, that yes. guy's cool as shit. He's hilarious, and uh, he looks fantastic too. <laughs> the guy looks the same as I remember him looking when I first saw him. I'm but there's all these like Gen X actors that are like were really into it because they really can't believe how crazy you know these are people that lived through the weinstein years but he's I out he, i can't believe it but he's, he's not out. out yet but he's not out yet pray god willing he'll be out soon <laughs> because i knew when i heard look i bring this up at every show about it i go i had a good joke that at prayer work you know like like um, dr cosby was freaks and all but they uh 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 this came out in the trial. Nobody remembers it. And I, and I remember at the time where I'm like, is everybody under a spell that you don't know this aspect of the case? What, that that woman me. had had a relationship with him years after? <laughs> no. One of the accusers? No. Okay. His dick had fallen off some, some time ago. Oh, he had that weird va vagina thing that was very his disgusting. His dick fell off of his fucking body and it came out during the trial because the woman's testimony was that she's standing there watching him. She thought he was intersex or something. Cause he had just like a stump and he had to get out some weird syringe and inject it into his dick stump during her, I guess, rape. She stood there and watched. And then what he said, you scissored. What the fuck are, what are we even talking about now? <laughs> Your honor move to dismiss the entire case. Cause my client has no dick. Okay. Look, just put the, put that together. How in the fuck is that even a thing? Cause they had people bring in their anecdotes from other shit, which is not a thing you can do in court. And that's why I was struck down, by the way. The Bill Cosby thing. I'm sure Bill Cosby did that. I'm sure he did. You don't get into power structure. You're not going to have a weird vice that they know about. And I'm sure my black friends are like, well, it's because he was going to try to buy NBC. I'm sure he was. Mm -hmm. And that's why they stopped tolerating what he did. Because you're not getting that big unless you participate. That's what we learned at Flavor Camp. <laughs> That's what Diddy thought as a flavor can. And it's all coming out now. So the thing to, to look to for, for all that prosperity gospel shit and all that fucking like now is an exciting time because people stuff that I don't even believe in, but other people, they're starting to see through the packaging of shit. So that's like what I think is really good. People are starting to notice, hey, wait a minute. Because all that, what are you trying to tear down a black man, trying to tear down a Christian? What are you trying to tear down a woman who's doing something? That old excuse for psychopaths, across the board, a bunch of people are noticing that it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. And you know why? Because our fuckbag satanic government forgot to promote enough of a force field of middle, of middle class blanks to keep to be a, a, a wall to protect them from the street people and you know, and well, the what? middle class is you over, man. It's what? over. It's over. Middle class is pretty much over. I think you got to. So they fucked people. up. So that meant they were banking on. Oh, okay. Now I'm really speculating. <laughs> uh, clearly, they were banking on AI to be done a lot sooner than it has been done. It has not achieved drawing hands yet. 
Um, okay. Let me just say Wait. this, dude. Did you no, see? No, it's coming along in ways. But remember those stores where you walk in and you don't pay? You just walk in like you're yeah. looting yeah. and it scans your phone? Yeah. That's fun. It's like I'm looting, but it's legal. It turns out that AI never worked. And they've just been having Indians watching people on a closed circuit TV fake it. I mean, that's like if you open the hood and there's ham oh, hamster wheels turning. All I'm How saying hilarious. is the regulation on this has passed and no one knows about it. So let me just show you this really quick. So um, they've now created uh, an executive order, which now only about 30 days away, because this was the end of March. And HHS actually has now come into uh, uh, line with this, where each government agency and all corporate entities and structures are now going to have to have a chief AI officer that has a certain clearance level. And so everything they do is going to be monitored by the Defense Department and the Intel communities, which are actually exempt from this. So, wow, the new priests are here. Yeah, so, so there, if you look at this, um, they're going to have to have certain clearances, but the intelligence community and the department, each agency, except for the Dep Department of Defense and Intelligence community, must individually inventory each of its AI use cases. Everything they do, software, hardware, it's all going and being funneled right into our Defense Department. So there's not going to be any real innovation. We've already seen the AI they've given us. It's shit. We yeah, can, um, can, but they probably have one that works perfectly well, I'm sure, for like <laughs> the last 30 years. Uh, but I'm talking about the ones for the idiots here who thought, because so what are we going to do with all this population? Because most of the jobs are going away and I didn't even want to do universal basic income because fuck these people, but they didn't want to do it. So I guess we'll have to soft kill them with various things, wars, and we need some wars and we need some fucking, uh, you know, a weird uh, 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 jab that. See, we were so close to being able to put this on the YouTube. That last line, maybe we'll just X that out. Metzger. I, I could talk to you for two fucking more hours, bro. I got to yeah, run. Man. I got to get right, the I'm going to the gym. Later, brother. I love you. We'll talk to you All later. Right. Yo, sign me up with that dude. I want to do it. All, All right. right. Yes, we'll definitely do that to you. All right. Later.